Welcome to Stranger Connections, where I celebrate wonderfully weird people and quirky stories. I'm your curious beast and host, Lisa David Olson, the world's practically famous business humorist. Let me come over and energize your team, hire me to do improv, whatever you might need. But it's really not about me today. Let's welcome a real comic, Nathan Timmel. Thank you for being on Stranger Connections. Thank you so much for allowing me into your space. I appreciate you allowing me to be a part of your your stranger connections. Well, and you know, you said you're strange. I said, come on in. And we're both having storms happening in the Midwest. So this could be exciting. We could hear big crackle boom. So let's find out if we can make it through the next little half hour here. <laughs> I think anybody that gets into any sort of artistic endeavor, be it musician, poet, painter, comedian, improv i there's there's something up here that is not right inside our noggin mm -hmm. and we try and heal that through whatever we're doing and so that in turn makes us all strange in a way it takes us if once we can figure that out then it becomes good once you search for the answers through acceptance then that's that's strange but once you figure out oh i'm looking for acceptance then you can like, oh, I don't, I don't need it anymore. That's what I've been. And then you can I'm, I'm making this up as I go along. But that, that's no, what you are accurate. Right I I yeah. speak about it in my first TEDx. I wrote about it in my first book that applause is acceptance. Laughter is, means that you want to hang out with me. It's all good. That's that's why comics are on stage. And we we want that. We're looking for it, that. I think where I got lost in my head is the danger of that is. One of one of my very good friends, a comic named Augie Smith, warned me against the perils of it because I watched him, I mean, just destroy a room. A standing ovation it was the funniest thing anyone had ever seen. And five minutes later, we were in the basement of the building in the bar all by ourselves. And he says, that's comedy right there. Within five minutes, you go from being a god, the most important person in the room, to sitting alone. And I'm like, yeah, you got to watch out for that. I, You go back to your hotel room or yeah. worse than that, you try and keep it going. You get off stage. OK, who's going to an after bar? You guys go like so, married couples. Uh, they, they go home after the comedy show. But if there are younger people in the audience, hey, where's everybody hang out? You guys going downtown, going to a bar and and you chase that. I suppose the heroin reference, chasing the dragon, you take the drug of laughter and try and replace it with, oh, the laughter is gone. I'm going to need a drink. I'm going to do a shot. I'm going to do something to keep this buzz going. True. And yeah, you use uh, substances to try and fill the void of laughter, which is trying to fill the void of something else. It's continually chasing an emotion and you got to break that. You have to find a way with me. It was my family. I met my wife at the right time when I was like getting older and losing some of the anger of my twenties and teen angst that carried through to my twenties. And, uh, yeah, now I'm a dad and I love comedy, but it's not the most important thing in the world to any me anymore. And I think that is a good shift because when you put all your heart and soul into an artistic endeavor and you discover that the comedy world is not merit based, the only thing in the world that's merit-based is sports. If you can score a touchdown, sink a three-pointer, you're golden no matter what your behavior is. And I'm not even saying you have bad behavior as a comedian. I'm just saying it doesn't matter if you're the most original, funny, talented, you know, uh, oh, I like hanging out with this guy. I'm going to book them. It's, it's right. non-merit-based, so you have to find a different focus. And for me, I found my family. Oh, and, and it is about age as well, but you're right about chasing that buzz because when we laugh and we share that in a room, we are sharing that moment, that sort of callback is we might be at the bar later and refer to a joke that you told earlier or something like that, but it is the that release of endorphins, that whole buzz that we should just shared. But yes, once you <laughs> find family, you're like, I can't wait to get home. <laughs> I can't wait to just get home, take off this bra, you know, that's you. Or, you know, whatever, the shoes, whatever. So, well, no, it's, it's, I, I have moobs. I, I have uh, some, <laughs> some, some moobs here going on. So, I, I like to wear a nice support, uh, yeah. <laughs> no wire uh, sports bra, or as my pref preferred, because they, <laughs> they hide under my shirts more. My underwire I should, I is my own hot black spot. I realize. Here, let's, let's, there we oh, go. Let's, break let's... out those guns. Oh, my well, gosh. I wasn't trying to do that. I was just realizing that I, I'm a floating head. So, there we go. Now there's a little color oh. here so that I, yeah. <laughs> 
because <laughs> we're doing video and audio to the audio we people. Are. You, you didn't see me flash a little skin, but to the video people, yeah, you saw, saw a little, saw a uh, little, a little pit shoulder. action. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Fantastic. I watched your your new YouTube comedy special, and oh, it's called you. Unapologetic. Oh, I didn't say it was good. I just thought no, I watched, you watched it. it. No, That's it, all was. That it was. It was. Yeah, right. You gave me a view. <laughs> and I subscribed. I did enjoy oh. it very much. Very. Uh, I loved the room you're in. You had a fantastic audience. They were just there for you. I, I thought it was a great chemistry. And I thought your show was fantastic. I related to a lot of it. Thank you so much. Um, going sideways, uh, let's talk about that for half a second, because I got so lucky. I'd been interested in filming a special for a couple of years, and it kept falling through. And the fact you loved the room, it, I, I, it was an accident. I stumbled my way into that. Whoa. That is a, it's called the Ideal Theater, and it's in Cedar Rapids. I and looked it guy, up because I was like, yeah. where in the heck is he? That is so cool. And so, I, like I said, I've been trying to do it in a traditional comedy club. I'd, I'd been, and and I'm not even going to get into all the stories, but it kept falling apart until he's, and I, I'm like, yeah, I'd love to do it. And I had never been there. So I just, one night after an open mic, when uh, Cedar Rapids had a comedy club, it went out of business, unfortunately. Mm. Um, I went to the open mic. I went over to the Ideal. I walked in and said, Oh wow. Oh, this is beautiful. I I need to I need to get this special idea to go. I, I need to film it here. And it just like I said, it they were into it. I said, Can I hire a crew to come in here and get in your way? And they said, We'd love it because they saw it as promo. You Googled it, right? I mean, so yes. they know they're getting it out there. And the last thing I'll say about it is <laughs> two days before the show, you were talking about the audience. We got very lucky. Um, because Two days before the the uh, the guy in charge of the booking said, eh, we're, we're about 50 percent capacity. I'm like, ah, you know, I've done so much promo. I'm trying to get people out. And only then, two days before we had we'd planned this for months, did we realize we were going up against Matt Reif with two sold out shows in the local Paramount Theater, which is Shut several up. thousand people. So oh, the biggest comedian wow. in the country at the moment had two sold out shows at the same night we were doing our little comedy thing over at the ideal theater <laughs> oh, but we got lucky word. because comedy's a last minute uh people like oh there that comedy show we could go do that so they came right. out and at the end we did sell it out which was wow you know, we only needed That's... 75 people we just needed seven i think we got up to i think we over don't tell the fire marshal i think we hit around 90 people that which is so great yeah. I mean, it sounds like a big crowd and it's just 90 people. You get the mics in the right place and you capture that laughter. I'll I'll take 90 happy people over, uh, you know, 500, eh, you know, chucklers or smilers any day. Right. And you seemed close to the audience. I didn't see the big gap no, between that, you and the audience. So that was fantastic. They that and you did feel that at the, the last room. second. They they put table there. There oh. is a gap there and they put tables right up front. Look at and I'm that. like, thank you. Because sweet. That, yes. Well, there's another comic that's in the group that you and I met through, which is uh, Dobie Maxwell's group. And Amanda just talked about it. I just blinked on her last name. Uh, I was you. The instant you said it, the first thing I thought was Bart Simpson. Amanda oh. hug and kiss. Can I get oh, Amanda yes, hug and kiss? Right. Is no, there Amanda uh, hug and kiss in the bar? <laughs> Calling Mo. I mean, that's you, you said Amanda. The first thing I thought of was uh, Mo's Tavern and Bart yes, and Frank calls. Mo's Tavern. But she said, own the room. She went, she got to the venue early and I think she was out in Vegas. And then she said I she got to post. the room. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And she I, got to the room early and there was the big gap. I, what do they call it? There's a nickname for that gap. And then oh, um, there are all sorts of nicknames, the DMZ, the zone of death, the, the, it, it has, but so anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about, anybody listening, Sometimes non-traditional comedy venues decide to have a comedy show, and if they don't have a standard stage, and they're putting a little temporary stage in a corner, if they if like a say a, a ballroom or a golf, uh, I've done you know a, a golf uh, club out uh, golf. What what's the? Not, I almost said outhouse, but it's a not clubhouse. Called, just a clubhouse. There's the clubhouse. I'd say I've golf certainly club, worked but... a, an outhouse in my day right. too, but that's not important <laughs> right now. So anyway, they just they put the stage in the quarter, and if they already have dining room tables set up, they'll just leave those set up, and they will leave this wide, vast uh, parting of the Red Sea between the performer and the a people. Chasm, the comedy and chasm. Yes, you have to talk over dead space to reach the people. 
and it doesn't work. And, so and we don't she, need the dance floor. We don't need dancers right. during our sets. And it was so Amanda, Amanda Cohen. Amanda went in and had them. Yep, she had them set chairs and perfect, beautiful, wonderful. And she even helped move the chairs. So, you know, usually if you show up, you are in your show clothes, generally, depending on what the gig is. But yeah, and so... I, I noticed that you didn't have that gap and and you're just saying that that was serendipitous that it just was the last second as you're filling up the room. And I think that is great. But uh, again, the special is the comedy special is on YouTube and it's unapologetic and you can just go watch it. You don't have to reserve it. There's no pitch. You don't have to pay, but do subscribe, subscribe to Nathan Timmel's channel. Dog, doggone it. Do what I say. And but there then, was a, there's one little thing that you mentioned that you don't have to pay. I uh, got in, I, I, I hate the English language, or maybe it's just because I'm dumb. Or it's I can't probably how I'm the, using it, but go ahead. I, I can't think of the right word. I didn't get in an argument with my wife. We had a disagreement, but that sounds a negative. A light debate? Was, yeah, maybe. She, wa she wanted me to put mid roll ads in the special because YouTube, she's like, you can make more money. Uh, and I just, I said, no, I got to hold my people ground. People dip because out. Right. My husband and, will dip out. Tell her right. he will just, dip. The instant it says five, 10 seconds. Plus, I wasn't even thinking of that. I was a little bit, but I'm thinking I don't I don't trust YouTube to interrupt the flow of a joke. Correct. I mean, if I were to leave in drinks of water, like, OK, look, 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 look. OK, you could put a commercial in there, but people would dip out. But yeah, I said, no, it's got to be. I'm not doing this for the money because why would I? I'm not going to be rich off it. But just no. So you say you don't have to pay. You don't even have to sit through ads was what I was getting to. You, Correct. You just watch it. You and your wife is right. Ads. But I do know that, boy, that's that's the double edged debate for yeah. sure, that people will dip because if you've got them, you've got them and an ad comes in and they, they're going to look up and remember that they were eating dinner or something. But I think it's great. You are uh, an accidental influencer, I think, because you definitely have a lot of followers on there as well. I... I have about 250, no, 280,000 followers across all social media. But what I have discovered is that doesn't mean anything. I mean, I thank you to anybody that did jump on board or subscribe or follow on it. But it's generally, a, oh, I like that video. Let's just uh, click follow. But it doesn't mean they come back. So what I've discovered is I have a very wonderful and I appreciate them core group of people that again you get I'm, i'll put it like this say you get ten thousand followers you're gonna get 15 20 25 people that really like what you're into and will show up so mm -hmm. you get twenty thousand followers now maybe you've got 50 75 so if i have two hundred eighty five thousand followers i hope i have somewhere in there one or two thousand people who just enjoy what i do and didn't just hit that like subscribe button and then I become an afterthought because that's what the internet is. It's mm -hmm. next, next, it's Janet Jackson. What have you done for me lately? And so right. that's why I put out a video a day. Like maybe it's too much content and people get tired of it, but, but I'm just trying, trying to stay in people's faces. Like, oh yeah, that guy's kind of funny. Oh yeah, I saw him yesterday. Like building yeah. up a... That's... Well, especially on Instagram, what I like is, so I do have a day job and it mm -hmm. is with with the city. So I can't do what you do, which is have a great opinion out there. Speak my mind. Yeah, <laughs> you do. Even your t-shirts. He's, he's got a whole line of merch y'all. So get over there to Nathan .com and you've got some great shirts out there. Um, and it, it has an opinion on it. And I think a lot of the things you, you know, I was checking out your Instagram and it's like, yeah, you got some opinions and I think that's great. And then brave, very brave. So that's how you find your people. You cannot speak and perform to everyone you be you and the right ones come in i hope so but i also have a problem and that is that i am i don't want to say an anarchist but i'm i'm not a centrist i just i'm honest in a way so what i have discovered is it is very very easy to get a following if you go hard left or hard right because those people love their echo chambers. But when I make fun of Biden, I tick off a certain segment. Then when I make fun of Trump, I tick off another segment. And I, the people that stick around, I do get some good feedback saying, I love how you attack both sides when they deserve it. But when it's a one-off game, when people are just swiping and they hear me, they, they're like, oh, he hates Trump, so I hate him. They don't want to get past that. Or even the fact that I've posted a 
pro Trump video once where I'm like, everybody thinks I hate Trump. Let me tell you what I liked about the guy. And I did. I can't remember him right now. I know that I, I listed that he killed Soleimani. I thought that was fantastic and hilarious. But the whole point is people bring their own thoughts and emotions to your video and whatever you say, they respond to it and then label you off their thoughts and emotions. It's not fair, but that's what humans do. And so, yeah, I'm trying to build a base with opinions. Unfortunately, my opinions don't they don't fit neatly inside a box and people love pretty boxes right now. They it's love true because, well, we want to be angry at the thing that we don't agree with. And right. then, you know, we want to rally around that, which we, yeah, it's, it's annoying. And I think that's the bad part of social media is that people sound opinionated, but in person there, there's no way they would say the things that they comment or just throw out there the, the troll comments. There's no way you'd be at a dinner party and go, well, I think your hair is stupid, you know? <laughs> And I and I hate I hadn't planned on doing this. I hate to bring it back to the special. And I didn't do an Please elegant, do. I didn't do an elegant job in the special because I sort of I I did it off the cuff. I had I did not prepare it. But I I make a joke against religion in the special. And the audience uh, busts into applause. And then I tell them, hey, you know what happens when I say that in front of religious people? They laugh and applaud too. Because in person, if you're at a comedy show, everybody's in on the joke. Oh, it's, it's you know, a, a mouth clown on stage doing his thing. That joke taken out of context from the special and posted somewhere could light a firestorm. Because online, it's easier just to get that anger going. It's easier to not understand the full context. It's, it's you're just looking at, you know, one minute as opposed to one hour or even better than watching the whole hour in person. You have decided to come out, see a comedy show, and even if I'm making a joke against something you believe in, the way I'm saying it, it's not a harsh like, F you, this is what I think. It's, I'm going to poke fun, and don't worry if you don't like it, we're moving on to the next thing I'm poking fun at. But yeah, that happens. That's a true story. I would take that joke into places where, according to the online world, it wouldn't work because I think one way, they think another but I got an applause for it because they get it. They go, ah, that's us. You know, like we in person, man, we, we, we need to move away from this online world. I said, as we yeah. record online, a product for the online world. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is it's also about who you're sitting next to. If I'm at your special with my husband and we laugh because we can, we both, we are both performers we can laugh at ourselves and that's generally the the most funny thing we can do is is the self-deprecating humor we can laugh at you also bringing that out in us but maybe if i'm next to my coworker, it's going to be different so it's about that neighbor and where you're at i mean there's just so many variances but generally yeah, and that's just, why corporate shows can be a pain correct especially if there's a an open bar i can't compete with that <laughs> I Especially cannot. if the bigwig boss is not laughing. You always got to look oh, at the boss. If the right. boss is in a good mood, then yep. great. If he's just sitting there like, mm, then the rest of the employers are like, I want a promotion. I better not laugh because he doesn't. Yeah, I know. And But you know what? We can't always go by the face. Um, there was a guy like that one time when I was speaking. It was last fall. He just looked like, he, he looked like he was annoyed that I existed after my because I'm, I'm an interactive speaker, so it's somewhat a humorist in, in all the things. In the back of the room, he came and bought my three different books and something else, and now I'm going to be speaking at his event later this month. So I was like, you can't nice. always try yeah. and not get in your head too much about their face, but you're right. It it can mess with you a little bit. Like, mm, I want him to love me. Just love me. <laughs> well, there's one, I, uh, one thing that helped me. Did you hear that? <laughs> Did that make no, because we have microphone? thunder over here. <laughs> oh, there's a big crash, like someone just fell down the stairs. Um, Should you go check? I can. No, my wife is I... out there. It's and and it stopped raining here, so whatever you're getting, we've we're out of the danger zone. <laughs> um, Bono of U2. I read a book um, about U2 on tour. Uh, a journalist got to follow them, and, and he said he goes through that. He said, or that's something he had to get over. He said that I remember. As we got into arenas, I'd be playing for 18,000 people and I'd see one person having a bad time. And then I would just sit and focus on that. Oh. And then I'd get in my head saying, dude, you have 
17,999 people here singing yeah. along with you, loving you, right. saying, oh, rock star. Yeah. And you're focused on that guy. What is wrong with you? But he said he did. He said, I would actively focus on the one guy having a bad time. For sure. I want to win him over. I want please him love me. Yes. Yeah. And my mother, she would come to every one of my shows, always wanted to sit up front. I'm like, please don't. I don't. I finally said to her, I don't want to see anybody I know. It messes with my brain. And all right, I'm just going to say it, mom. You never laugh out loud. And she goes, I can't. And I said, what do you mean? I've sit with you all my life and we laugh. She's like, I can't. I don't want to miss anything. I laugh later when I go through it again. <laughs> so we can't know what's going through somebody's head. <laughs> that happened to me. The first comedian I ever saw was Robin Williams. I saw him at the Riverside Theater in Milwaukee. Wow. After the show was over, wow. I guarantee I missed more than 50% of the jokes. My stump, my my guts hurt, my belly, my I, my face oh. hurt from like perma smile. I had been crying, but I realized as I'm laughing and crying, like I I don't know what he said. Like I probably missed fifty percent of the show because he was so rapid fire and exactly. so funny. And, yeah. So my mother definitely saw me in that light. No, I'm kidding. But <laughs> <laughs> all right, I want to talk about something. Sure. Something that does make you angry, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna make you angry roundabouts it i love roundabouts it's not roundabouts <laughs> that make me angry it's to... other drivers oh, true. it's ah. other drivers it's that's the problem with the world is other people <laughs> to me roundabouts are beautiful they keep the traffic flowing why do you come to a complete stop before entering them if they're empty and here's the worst part about that joke so i what you're referencing is a joke it's in the special where i i and I talk about people that come to a complete stop before entering an empty roundabout. And after I had written that joke, just out driving on my own, I was driving with my wife. She was behind the wheel and she did it. And I'm, no. like, oh, like, I'm making a joke about my wife, the woman I'm, I love and no. the mother of my, and I even said that to her. I said, why are she like, I, I, I slowed down. I'm like, but there was nothing coming. She's like, but you're supposed to slow it. I'm like, no, oh my God, I'm, I'm talking about you. I didn't mean to, but yeah, there, there. <laughs> That'll, oh, so you're divorced now? That'll be, she'll win custody and everything because she'll just tell the lawyer that, that I wrote a joke and, and yeah, yeah, not yet, but when it happens, that will be, that'll be in it. That'll well, be yeah. In that. Oh, don't do that. Yeah. And I, yeah. Okay. So yes, it's, I don't know if it's just a Midwest thing, but we call them roundy rounds just because it makes it more fun. But yeah, definitely. <laughs> I've never heard that. <laughs> no, we made it up because my husband right. and I play uh, redneck characters um, when we parody the town and we're Cletus and Lurleen and we talk about going through them roundy rounds. So. <laughs> oh, I like that. I did like not that know about your wife. I, I wanted to like her, but that kind of, hopefully you had it talk and you could not I, let her ever no. drive again. Not a talk, just, you know, you when you're in a marriage, you do things gently as, as you're driving and she's driving, you're just like, oh, I don't see anything coming. You know, like you just, you just, <laughs> just, just, just gentle nudges, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to overreact. You don't want to, you don't want to cause a fight. You just, you just, just gently nudge them in the right direction until they figure it out on their own. I've been invited to not coach during driving. I've been invited um, and there might be a reason he's my third and final husband. I don't know. <laughs> What's the common denominator here? <laughs> I have opinions. I'm helpful. I'm super helpful. So I think that's great. So you uh, want to plug your podcast. You have Idiots on Parade. We should send people sure. that way too. Tell us about that. Well, I should send people that uh, are listening right now and thinking, wow, what a nice guy. What a neat man. Not a neat person. He's the podcast is not neat. It's a, a oh. buddy of mine. And <laughs> all we do is mock everything in the news. I mean, Israel, Palestine, presidential elections. You find anything. We are just making fun of it. Scorched earth. No. So if you tune in thinking, well, he was a really pleasant fellow. I can be. Yes, I can be a very pleasant fellow, but I, I also have a, a dark side to me. And that's where I let it shine. And especially Jake, my buddy, Jake, the, the co co uh, co podcaster, he, he has a mind unlike any other. He will, will just go down paths that make me laugh. I'm the straight man on that podcast. I, just let him, I let him. I'm the I almost made a bad reference. I'm the abbot to his Costello or would it be the other way? I don't know. You're the teller to his I'm the pen? mo to his curly. 
Well, luckily I'm of the age to know that, but maybe you're the teller to his pen, whichever one is the yeah. quiet one. I always forget and get them mixed up. Okay. I, it's so one of those things where I might have known it if you hadn't put me on the spot. Gillette, pen Gillette and teller. So yes, I'm the teller. Yes, oh, okay. Is the, is the boisterous one. <laughs> I did say it right. <laughs> yeah, you did. On purpose. Yes, of course it was. All right. I need to know from you, you pleasant fellow, if you've ever had a dare or a prank that you've either done or had done to you, some sort of story you can share before I let you run off and play in the puddles. Yes, I was, I just uh, had a show that was three hours away with a local comic. So we drove there and back together. And when you're in the car for six hours, you're just talking about life. And I remembered a prank that a friend and I did in high school. And that's the beauty of technology is I started texting my friend. Hey, do you remember when we did this? Where did we get? And he's like, oh, my, I remember that. But no, I don't remember. We stole some road close signs. And that's what I texted him. I said, hey, where did we steal those from? And he's like, I don't remember. And my buddy in the car said, uh, probably from some road that needed to be closed. So <laughs> what we did is I'm going to do the best I can to describe this because it's a not visual joke, but my friend lived. OK, take take a capital H and turn it sideways. My friend lived on the uh, vertical part of that H. And so you could only access his road from two points, top mm. and bottom, north and south. So his his road was. Um, and what we did, there was a curve in that 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 part. And we just stole these road close signs and set them up at one of the two entrances and then far enough back so that you couldn't see them from the closed interest. Like if you pulled up to the, the entrance that was closed, you looked, you would not see the second set of them. So basically we shut down his road is my point. So they would drive up to one side and go, <laughs> oh, I've got to get to my house. To, you know, I, and this, so I, I, they would have to drive five, seven miles all <laughs> the way around to the other entrance. And when they got there, that was closed too. And oh, we would no. watch these people get so angry, like, how am I supposed to get to my help? What the? And they would get out of their car and scream, oh. or they would just, they would stand there frustrated and confused. They they all seemed to get out of their car for some reason. Like that was going to help. Yeah, right. Like they would just, they would stare at these road signs, these road closed, big barriers, just dumbfounded. And this is before the days of cell phones. This is well oh, before cell phones. So man. they can't just call. This is, this is, you know, and they can't just, you know, dial the police or 911. Hey, That's why anything. we don't see people get out of their cars anymore because they just have the cell phone. Why would we right. have to get up from a sitting position? Yes. You don't have to do anything. So <laughs> eventually the police showed up. I don't know how long it took, but <laughs> the whole point is one, I don't remember where we got these road close signs. Neither does my friend. We just Oopsie. know we did it. We know for oh. a fact. And again, here's the sad part. Again, no cell phones. We don't have footage of it because back then the um, portable camera was a VHS player the size of a how yeah you know, like it looked like a professional camp but it just with a vhs in it and so i think one guy tried moving them or one person did one person i know drove up on the sidewalk and around them like oh, i'm wow. getting to my house <laughs> but just the ability from where we were perched to be able to watch people go to that first set of road and and just watch them get angry and drive off and then five minutes later see them come around on the <laughs> other side and realize they would been screwed I, I think it's just something dumb you do as a kid. Like it you is. see these signs like, hey, dude, I, you know what we could do with these? I know and, what we can do. And we did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I re it's I remember it probably because I told it you know a week ago. But when I was telling it to my friend in the car and texting <laughs> my buddy and having the memories, we were both laughing so hard because it was, I hadn't <laughs> thought of it in forever. I'm like, yes, you're a dumb teenager going, I bet we could close that road down and make some people angry. And we did. Yeah. And so that, and it was a, just a beautiful. Hold my soda. If, watch this. Right. And if any law enforcement out there is listening, of course I'm lying because I don't know the statute of limitations on stealing a road closed uh, barrier. So right. this so, is all comedy. Yeah. It just, you made it up winky. Um, yeah. That's, that we don't that's want all... the police to know about you stealing state owned property nor do we want like we kept it we left it out on the road we we didn't steal it you know what we 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 transported it we it we, was we windy shuffled it around it it remained in the city 
no harm, no foul, not not damaged, just just moved a little. And then you don't want the fire marshal to know about overpacking the theater. There's a lot also of lies. Crime also here. lies. Lies. Yeah. Lies. It, it, what inferred. we did is there were three people and we just looped their laughter and doubled and tripled it. Yeah. And well those done. audience shots of the audience, special effects. We Cardboard. had Lucas's um, um, Skywalker Ranch adding those people in. Do you know, though, if you hold up like a spoon in front of a camera, it could look like a person's head from the back or something? Yeah. that's Also, though, the only other part on this story you just shared is what happened to the road that was supposed to be close and the cars that did to go drive on it. Did you ever think about that? Yes and no, because I asked that last week and the other comedian said, hey, yeah. at least it wasn't a bridge outside. And I went, you know what? Good point. So we we had people's backs on that. We, we everybody's we, you know, covering everybody. Okay. No harm, no foul. <laughs> just just road closed, not not bridge out. That would it was been bad. cute. <laughs> yeah. We didn't read about anything the next day and no. Maybe someone lost a shock absorber at best. Or yeah. Worst. Right. Okay. <laughs> That'll teach them. Oh, well, thank you so much for being here and tell people again. So throw out your website, your podcast. I know you're on the Instagrams and the X and Everything all the things. Is, well, no, we took it off the website. We used to have like, a, you go to the website and you see the little click here for Instagram, there. Here for TikTok. Your little oh, icons are there. Are there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, there you go. Then all you need to do is go to NathanTimmel.com. It's one-stop shopping. The t-shirt store, the special, the Instagrams, the social, everything is linked Your book. There. Dude's and an I, author. Yeah. You wrote a vigilante justice thriller called We Are 100. Yeah. I, I bet you knew that. <laughs> work of fiction. I, I'd written three nonfictions before that. And that was that was my idea to, to get some fiction into the world. So some great reviews on there. I couldn't put it down. He grabbed me from the beginning. And um, mm. I want to see these characters again. Great That's reviews on that. I don't do sequels. <laughs> that was the but one you left him is. wanting more, like a good I comic did. should. You also wrote yeah. that way with this justice thriller. So congratulations on that. Thank a you. A whole lot of stuff. Well, I am honored to have chatted with you, Nathan Timmel. And remember that we can only be strangers once. And I invite you to stay a weird, if you can. Was can you? I wasn't talking because oh, I thought that was your sign off. So I wasn't going to say anything. It is, but you oh. say something, Woody. So I'll say, and I invite you to stay weird. I'll, I'll pass. I'm just going to sit here being normal in my basement, <laughs> waiting for the tornado to hit. Thank you. See, I did it that way. <laughs>